Horses have been taught, we could even say programmed by life, for thousands of years, perhaps even thousands of thousands of years, not to get captured. They have learned to survive and even thrive on this planet by not getting caught. In other words, not getting caught is how they've made their living. If horses had a motto or creed hung over their door, it would be, don't ever get caught. It's the first thing they're prepared for the day they are born. Within a few hours after birth, mom has prodded her newborn to get on its feet. And on wobbly, shaky legs and a few failed attempts, the task is completed. This is something that takes our species hundreds and hundreds of failed attempts and usually a few years before the same task is finally accomplished. Although if horses do get caught, resistance becomes their next best line of defense. They have learned how to protect herself if they are captured. They have practiced and sharpened their survival skills through playing with other horses in the herd and in the interactions within the herd dynamics. And they have rehearsed for the moment they are captured every day since the first days of their birth. But what is the first thing we do to them? We catch them. We do exactly what Mother Nature has taught them not to do, which is don't ever get caught. The worst fate a horse could endure is to get caught and then have its captor get on its back. It's been caught, and now the thing is on its back getting ready to eat it. At least that's what the horse fears. And what do we do? We throw a saddle on its back. This is the worst moment in a horse's life. It's the worst possible situation a horse could face. It's been taught and trained to resist this at all cost, because if it doesn't, its life may end. But as though that wasn't enough, what else do we do to the horse? We pick up its hoof. The legs and hooves are the most important survival tools the horse has, and at least instinctively, the horse knows this. And for this reason, all horses are very protective of those precious hooves. But not only do we pick up a hoof, what do we do after we pick it up? We hide it behind the horse's back. Horses can be very afraid of what they see, but they are even more afraid of something like a noise that they can't see. Of course, we don't try to hide it intentionally, but the horse doesn't know our intentions. It can't read our mind. It's not a human whisperer. All it knows is, this horse-eating monster has got a hold of its hoof and doing something to it. But it can't see what. And to make matters worse, it also can't feel what we are doing to its hoof. Horses don't have a lot of feeling in the outer layer of their hoof wall. If they did, they wouldn't be able to stand out in the cold, the snow, and the ice. So they can't see what is happening to the hoof, and they can't feel it either. If horses could see, or at least feel what we're doing to the hoof, they wouldn't be so worried and protective. But how would you respond if a stranger walked up to you to shake your hand and then forced it behind your back and started making noise doing something to one of your fingernails? You can't see what is happening. You can't even feel what is happening. You don't know if or when this is going to hurt. Wouldn't this be very scary to you? This is what it does to the horse too. Yet when the horse jerks its hoof away, just doing the same thing you or I would do if someone had a hold of our hand, well now the horse really has problems. It might get twitched, drugged, legs tied up, thrown down, or put in stocks. But what does the horse really need? It needs to know that it can trust whoever is holding its hoof. The same thing you would need if someone was holding your hand behind your back. You would need to know that they are not going to hurt you no matter what they do. But yet what does a horse usually get because of its resistance? Resistance that would be natural for you or I. It's just given more reasons not to trust. The most important thing that it needs in order to effectively deal with this situation. For more information on how you can create the trust you are seeing in this video, there is an ebook called The Revolutionary Approach to Training Horses for the Farrier Using the Herd Wisdom for the Humane Treatment of Horses and Farriers. Although it's more than just for farriers, it's a higher understanding of horses and what is important to them.